Good morning, all of you. We have finished the, the topic of electromagnetics. And the one more topic uh, to begin with is electromagnetic induction. Simple topic, very simple scoring for most of the students. Yes, it is a very easy scoring because the entire chapter is based on just one or two principles or one or two expressions. Now, the entire chapter is based on this definition of magnetic flux. And flux we have already defined in electromagnetics as B bar vector and the aerial vector A bar vector dot. So this is the dot B bar dot A bar. B bar dot A bar. And for coil analytic, last topic also we have used a coil which is made up of L term. Coil of any shape for that matter, right? Therefore, it is this is B bar dot A bar AB cos theta magnitude. If it is made up of n turns, I'm also writing this small n, the number of turns in a coil. So this is how we have defined flux, right? Now it is the SI unit. SI unit is Weber. Also remember an alternate unit as joule per ampere because this will help us in finding the dimension formula very easily. Joule, you know, ml square t rise minus 2. This is ampere. If it is m, l square t minus 2, i minus 1. Scalar quantity flux. The dot product, therefore, is a scalar quantity. Now you see, based on the very definition, how a simple question can be asked, which we call a conceptual question. Now, if I place a surface, a coil in a magnetic field for which orientation the flux through the coil is maximum flux through the coil is minimum zero so a question is big like this what is the question a coil placed in a magnetic field in finding that answer the most important thing is about this theta term already we have defined in the last classes this A bar vector is a pseudo vector which is always taken as outward vector and this theta is angle between B bar and A bar that is this angle theta is made by B bar with normal to the plane of the coil but not with the surface of the coil. Hope you remember the same kind of illustration there also we have shown. Supposing this is a coil. This is a coil and now I show this black marker as the normal. This is the normal to the plane of the coil. If supposing it's a coil and this is the normal I have taken. And supposing now this blue marker I am using it for the magnetic field. So if this is what is B bar vector in which this coil is now imagined now the angle is not taken by B bar with the surface in fact normal and B bar this is the normal vector and this is B bar this is what is taken to be theta the definition of theta is very essential in our answer supposing in such case a coil placed in an external magnetic field for which orientation flux will be maximum for flux to be maximum here Mathematically, we will say cos theta equal to 1, theta is equal to 0 degrees. Then what does it mean? If this is what is magnetic field, this is what is the magnetic field and I have placed the coil with the plane of the coil. Remember, the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. This is the plane of the coil and this is magnetic field. Plane of the coil perpendicular to the magnetic field, then in such case theta equal to 0, cos theta equal to 1 flux is maximum. Therefore, now I am mentioning that here. Now, for this given case, flux is to be maximum, yes. Yes. Now, plane of coil. Plane of coil perpendicular to plane containing magnetic plane containing magnetic flux then it is maximum flux flux will be maximum whereas the other case see supposing if this is what is the plane of the coil and this is what is the magnetic flux I am showing you supposing the same blue color if it is like this 
What does it mean? Now the plane of the coil is in the plane of the magnetic flux. In such case, flux is zero. Definitely write that one also. So if plane of coil coincides with the with the plane of flux, magnetic flux, magnetic field, then this flux is zero. So the orientation of the coil in the magnetic field will have the effect on the flux cutting or flux through that coil. So this is one fundamental definition to remember. I told you this is a very simple topic because most of the topic is based on this definition. And uh, now let us begin with uh, the other topic. Like this electromagnetic induction a discovery by Michael Faraday with very simple experiments has given to loss of electromagnetic induction. Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction, in fact, it is very much similar to the Newton's loss of motion that we have come across in our first theory. How? Newton's first law says it is the external force that tends to change the state of a, an object. Any change of state is due to force and that is why he said whenever there is change of state tendency yes the object shows a inherent property of opposing the change of state and that property is what is called as inertia. So Newton's first law defines mechanical inertia which depends upon mass it is said that similarly here what is Faraday's first law? Faraday's first law says Whenever magnetic flux linked with a coil changes, the change in magnetic flux, in fact we should say the change of magnetic flux can be in two ways, either in terms of direction or in terms of orientation when changes, that is also causing a change in the flux. So when magnetic flux linked with a coil changes, as long as the flux changes, so long an EMF will be induced in the coil. Remember, there, there was inertia to oppose external agency that tries or tends, tends or changes the state of an object. Here also the similar way, Faraday's first law says every coil exhibits magnetic inertia. What is that magnetic inertia? It is the inherent property by which the coil opposes the change in its magnetic state. So, I am not giving you Faraday's first law as a statement that we do for our board exam. Here, what do we remember? Faraday's first law is analogous to Newton's first law of motion and here it defines magnetic inertia. Changes of magnetic flux is opposed by the coil. And now, the second one is very much similar to Sir Newton's second law of motion. There we said the force as a rate of change of momentum and takes place in the direction of the change of momentum. Similarly here also, after explaining why induction arises in the second law, it is now said that how much EMF is induced. Remember, when we are talking about EMF, EMF exists both in open circuit and as well as closed circuit, right? Whereas PD, if we call specifically PD or current, they exist only in closed circuit. Remember, open circuit, both EMF and as well as PD. Now the second law is, this is what I was saying, the most of the examples based on one or two principles, this is one such principle, the induced EMF in a coil, E is equal to negative of a negative sign, but is a significant let us see, rate of change of flux linked with the, the coil, right? Now, the point is first about this negative sign. This negative sign signifies that whatever EMF is induced, that will oppose the agency that causes the EMF, the induced EMF, that is, the induced EMF always opposes the agency which causes the change of flux, right? So, whoever causes the change of flux, that agency is opposed 
this is what is the meaning of this negative sign and that is what is called as Lenz law. L E N Z Lenz law, which is a consequence of conservation of energy. Remember, Lenz law, a consequence of conservation of energy is the principle. Now, to understand Lenz law, I will give you one example. See here. Before going into other details, supposing here is a coil I have taken, this is a coil. Now it is placed like this, like this, right? Now I have taken a magnet, it's, suppose it's a bar magnet, I call it North Pole and South Pole. Supposing if this both magnet and this coil are stationary, then whatever flux is linked with this uh, coil due to the magnet will be a constant, no change either in magnitude or any other directions. Therefore, no EMF will be induced here. Whereas, now if the magnet is moved with respect to coil, or coil is moved with respect to magnet, in either of the case, that is what is called as relative motion between coil and the magnets, the flux change will give rise to an induced EMF. When such EMF is induced, we have to first find which is the higher potential and which is at lower potential or else if it is a closed loop, what will be the direction, sense of the current, whether it is clockwise current or anti-clockwise current. To find that, this Lenz law will be helpful. How? You please see this. Because already we have mentioned about one thing. Any circular coil or any coil, any coil of wire carrying current acts as a magnetic shell whose magnetic moment M bar is parallel to B bar. You know, you remember that vector? The same we will use here with the Lenz law, and you remember that as an example. Now, supposing if this is what is north pole facing the coil, see, remember this is what is my show here. If this is what is the coil, if this is what is the coil and this is the magnetic pole facing the coil and it is coming towards the coil, it is coming towards the coil, then it causes the increase of flux, right? Coming closer causes increasing flux. This increase in flux is now opposed by the tendency of the natural tendency of the coil which we call magnetic inertia. And that is why what happens immediately there will be an induced current in the coil such that remember if north is approaching the coil how to oppose the approach of a north, play, north pole there should be another north pole which opposes the north pole that is why what happens here see if this is what is the coil and you are bringing magnet towards the coil with the north pole facing the coil in such case, remember, here I show you, this is not, now this phase, this phase which is facing the magnet will attain north polarity. So not approaching the coil, this phase will be north and this phase will be south. And that is all. Supposing in this case, if the magnet is moved away from the coil, in such case, not going away, flux is decreasing. In such case, to counter the change of flux, what happens? The north should be attracted towards south and thereby the relative motion is stopped. Therefore, this phase facing the magnet should now attend south polarity. In such case, now you see, if this is what is north pole towards the coil, north polarity on this phase, you just at the ends draw those arrow marks, it will show you the order. Now you see this is what is the order that you are getting. This is the order that you are getting. This order is nothing but, this order is nothing but anti-clockwise order. So this is how the current direction we can show here. Since current direction is shown here, this is said to be at higher potential and this end is supposed to be at the lower potential. That is how we make use of Lenz law, which is a consequence of conservation of energy. Now, let us come into the few more details about this E is equal to minus of d phi by dt. First, now if I say in a closed loop, in a closed loop, there will be, along with EMF, there will be current also. In closed loop, the induced current I am writing, 
Remember, all EMFs, currents, or charges, whatever we are now mentioning, they are all induced. And they are induced only as long as the change in flux sustains. Once the change in flux is stopped, the induced EMF becomes zero. Remember this. Now I am writing for induced current I is equal to induced EMF by yes, the resistance of that loop E by R. Therefore, this is 1 by R times D phi by DT. Of course, I am not using the negative sign as I have told you. It is for significance and we have told that significance on the base of Langella. Now, this is induced current and now let us see what is induced charge. Induced charge, you remember I equal to, we write it as I is equal to, sorry, Q is equal to induced charge and rate. Induced charge, induced charge dQ is equal to I into dT. So already you find this dT here, and therefore in the multiplication, what do you get? The induced charge dQ is equal to d phi by capital R. One more result. See, same we are writing into induced EMF, induced current and induced charge. Here once again you find one simple conceptual question. The induced current, yes it depends upon the rate of change of flux. Induced EMF, now induced current also depends on rate of change of flux. But now what do you find? This induced charge depends only on the change of flux but not rate of change. It is independent of the time factor. Induced EMF and induced current, rate of change of flux, and whereas induced charge depends only on change of flux. So this is to be remembered. And one more thing, as I have told you, the fundamental definition flux forms a very key role in all the expressions. Now you see we have told phi is equal to MAB cos theta. Now a fundamental definition is E is equal to d phi by dt along with negative sign of course. E is equal to d phi by dt and phi is equal to n a d cos theta. Remember the definition of theta also we have explained. Now these two will tell you that you can write your own expressions for electromagnetic induction. That is the induced EMF E is equal to. Now, there are some simple examples where you find that no change in the number of turns, no change in the area of the loop, no change in the orientation of the coil, no changes. But there you will find a time varying magnetic field. So now coil is placed in a space which contains time varying magnetic field. That is B is the only variable and all others remaining constant. Then our answer is E is equal to M A cos theta because all these are remaining constant. N number of turns A area of the coil times cos theta the orientation term. Now this is what is D B by D T rate of change of magnetic induction. So in the data you will want to find data as I mean Tesla per second, milli Tesla per second like that in such examples this is what is called. Now when you look at this um, discussion please do remember we have to be very good at only two definitions flux and then this Faraday's second law whatever we are writing afterwards you can do it for yourself in 5 seconds or 10 seconds. Don't memorize that because these are all very simple things which we have dealt in current electricity, electromagnetism, use those simple rules here. Now supposing I take another case where number of turns remaining constant, area remaining constant and B the induction also remaining constant but what happens means the orientation is changing. Orientation is changing means then I am writing E is equal to no change in number of turns and area and induction therefore this time it is d by dt of what is cos theta I can write as cos of omega t because when the and orientation is changing we can say that it is being rotated that in that rotations if omega is the angular velocity or angular frequency of rotation then we write it as d cos omega t in such case e is equal to n a 
B, it will be like uh, sin theta. What you will get it as E is equal to N A B sin theta you will get. Or else in some example you will find that this is what is N A B times cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2. If it is changing from theta 1 position to theta 2 position and during an interval delta t, you can also write expression like this as well. Right? And one more case, it will be there for our neat and CET, like no changes in the number of terms, no changes in B, and also no changes in the orientation. But change in area is also possible. We write those as emotional EMF even afterwards. In such case, area changing, we will write the expression as E is equal to N, no change, A changing of course, N, B, cos theta, all these things, no changes. Now I will write it as B A by D T, the rate of change of A. When you look at this complete board, you will find it as the some list of formulae, is it? Never. The definition of Mach reflex and Faraday's second law yielding all the results. Hopefully you will also do such simple practice for 5 minutes. You will get used to all these equations. Electromagnetic induction, the topic with the 3 to 4 very big titles, big headings. And we begin with the, the concept of self-induction. Earlier it was Faraday's laws, Lange law, based on that we, give, we have given some expressions. In fact, it is only one expression as d5 by dt which we are going to use even in our following topics. Self-induction topic. What is self-induction? The phenomena in which EMF is induced in a coil due to current carried by the coil itself. That is, the source for induction of EMF is not external. The current carried by the coil itself causing EMF induced in the coil. It means that the coil is not a steady current. So when coil carries current, it produces a magnetic field according to our principles of electromagnetics and if that current is variable current, the field is also variable and hence flux is variable. So this is how its sequence comes. So in this case, let us begin with the fundamental definition, flux through the coil is proportional to current through the coil. Therefore, flux equal to, I have said as Li, where that L is the proposed at a constant which we introduce here as coefficient of self-induction. Coefficient of self-induction, phi is equal to Li. We have told many a times we use a coil made of n terms. In such case, it will be n phi is equal to Li, n for number of terms the coil made of. So n phi is equal to L i. This L is what is coefficient of self-induction, whose uh, unit you will get it as. So it is already we have told Weber per ampere. So Weber per ampere is the unit which we otherwise call as Henry. Weber per ampere Henry. Remember, we have already told that this Weber can also be written as joule per ampere. Therefore, Henry is nothing but joule per ampere square. So alternate form you will remember, so that not only the question based on units and dimensions, but also for other uh, examples where other than numericals, symbols are given and we can identify the answers by using dimensional analysis. One or two is definitely possible in any examination, for that the SI unit of coefficient of self-induction, Weber per ampere which we call Henry symbol, capital H. They alternate and that it is joule per ampere square. Now, the device which works on the principle of self-induction is what is called as inductor, and we denote with this symbol like a spiral. It is not a sister, remember, it is a spiral. L I am writing. Now, this L refers to the magnetic inertia. In the mechanics, we have said the linear inertia depends on mass. More mass, more is the inertia like that. Similarly here, we, when we said magnetic inertia using Faraday's first law, that magnetic inertia is represented by this parameter capital L. So more coefficient, greater is the inertia. Now you see in this self-inductor, I mean inductor based on the property of self-induction, what will be the induced EMF? Our statement is negative of d5 by dt. 
Therefore, phi is equal to a substituted Li, and supposing if it is a coil made of n terms, we will also multiply with n that is understood here. So, E is equal to minus of L di by dt. What is this di by dt? This is what we were mentioning earlier. When coil carries steady current, no question of any change in magnetic flux and hence no change in or uh, uh, no question of induced error. The current carried by the coil, if changes, it causes all the consequences and hence induce the MF. Therefore, this di by dt through the coil, we can call it either rate of growth of current or it may be rate of decay of current, current increasing case or current decreasing case. di by dt. Here also you can write one more uh, uh, unit for your coefficient of set induction L. What is that? This is volt, this is second and this is ampere. So you can, we can also write it as Henry which is Weber per ampere, Joule per ampere square. Now I will also write it as old second per ampere. Therefore now here we find one more relation that Weber is nothing but volt second. Likewise any of uh, the quantities that you take and you try to relate those units, uh, your approach for numericals will be a bit easier. So this is what is the definition uh, or expression for uh, induced EMF in an inductor. Remember, this induced EMF in the case of an uh, inductor is what is called as back EMF. This L into di by dt term we call it as back EMF. Why we call this back EMF? Again, as a consequence of Lange law. The EMF induced always opposes the agency that causes the change of magnetic flux, and that is why inductor always opposes, we said back EMF, and that is why it opposes growth and decay of currents. So, this is what is the property of inductor, which we use very uh, popularly in our next topic that is alternating current. So what is the property of a cell inductor? It is back EMF and what is the function of back EMF? Opposes both growth and decay of current. It does always opposes increase of current or decrease of current. So these are very popular topics regarding self-induction. Now let us come to all important topic of this coefficient of self-induction. I'm telling you in electromagnetic induction, this is a very tough topic for the students. Why? Because people do think it as a memory, therefore right expression will not come to their rescue in the examination. And one more time I am here showing how we can make use of our fundamental definitions concepts that we have learned in our previous topic. Now you see coefficient of self induction if we use this expression L is equal to N pi by I becomes N for number of turns I current carried by the coil. Now phi, the definition is induction times area. Area depends upon the particular shape. Now you see I am writing for one particular case, a very popular case, circular coil of radius capital R made of n turns. Remember we have already given expression for B for circular coil in the previous topic. That is what is to be made use not trying to memorize the formula. It's very difficult to memorize formula. It will always be a confusion. See, that is what we have begun with. We know expression for B, B not A by two. Yes, this is our memory, and we can use it very easily. And therefore, if I substitute here, what is that I'm getting? L equal to yes, mu naught times that mu naught value. We know that uh, four pi ten raised minus seven n per meter. The n square term we will get. N is already there, and one more n. Therefore, this is the n square. This A is uh, pi r square. And the R term is there for so cancellation, it is mu naught n square pi R by 2. Now, here we will find one uh, equality or proportional to L, the coefficient of self inductance. Remember, L proportional to n square times R. Any changes with respect to number of terms, with respect to radius, comparison of L. Difficult example and the meter CT I am telling you. And again, I am telling you, you don't memorize this for today. You can write this expression, the definition, and then you can use the result of B, which we have did in the previous topics. So L proportional to N square R, L1 by L2, comparisons, like that. 
Now, what do we observe? This L coefficient of self-selection depends on, depends on, you see here, depends on the number of terms and depends upon the size, which is capital of the radius, it depending upon the size and it is independent of current. Current term is getting cancelled, right? L independent of current to the coil depends on number of terms of the coil, number two, size of the coil and also it depends upon the shape of the coil. Why it depends upon the shape of the coil? You see in the next one or two cases. See this I big in detail. Next I would like to remind you that the same question of D for a square loop we did, for a solenoid we did in the previous topic, the same expressions will you please make use and what are the expressions that you get? Now for a square loop, L is equal to 2 root 2 mu naught n square uh, if I write it as some L by pi. This L is the side of a square. Again, N for number of terms. Here again you will find capital L proportional to N square times small L depending upon the size and also depending upon the number of terms. Look here, what is the difference here? Earlier you find here 2 but here you are finding it as pi. Right? And therefore the shape matters, it also depends upon the shape we told. And this is for, uh, we are writing for solenoid. Because solenoid, you remember? Solenoid, we said capital B is equal to mu naught. Yes? B is equal to mu naught. N, I we have taken. There, that small n is not the total number of terms. Rather, it is a capital N by L. L is the total number of terms and L is the length. This is for long solenoid, you remember? N by L. So the same is substitute mu naught. Uh, here is one more uh, specialty also that will be there. If you multiply with area mu naught, N into N, N square. Area of the cross section, which we call it as afterwards pi R square if R is the radius. And L is the length of the solenoid. See here we have one more uh, term which is uh, mu r. So what does it mean? In the case of any inductor or in the case of like solenoids, it also depends upon the material which is uh, filled in the core of the inductor or core of the solenoid. This mu r is uh, relative permittivity. So relative permeability and mu r greater than 1 for paramagnetic materials and ferromagnetic materials. So, to increase the value of L, one of the better ways without increasing the shapes or number of turns, one of the ways in which we can get the required L values by using suitable material filled in the core of uh, that uh, inductor or that uh, solenoid. So this is what is an important point to be remembered for coefficient of self-induction inductor. This one. And now we said, see here, inductor opposes the growth and decay of current. The induced EMF is called. That EMF opposes growth and the decay of current. And therefore, whenever we allow, we want to constitute current through an inductor. Battery has to does work. Battery has to does work to overcome this opposition, either increase in current or decrease in current in both the cases. And that is why battery does work and it will store as potential energy. So here we are now writing the concept of energy stored in an inductor. What is the reason? Battery does work to oppose this uh, concept of battery MF which is growth and decay of current with respect to work is done and that will be stored as potential energy W is equal to U is equal to the results are very popular you know L I square by 2 L I square by 2 similar to the one which we have given in the case of capacitor I will give you a comparison also here u is equal to l i square by 2 coefficient of inductance i current carried by the coil right and you know you can also write it in two to three different forms because the data demands which form we need to use when we solve the examples then you will come to know now l into i that definition says this is phi phi times i by 2 so one more expression 
or else if I do it as L squared and denominate also L, that L I will be 5. Therefore, this will be 5 squared by 2L. 5 squared by 2L. So, these are the expressions. Remember the same expressions we have given even in the case of the capacitor. We remember it as U is equal to CV squared by 2, CV squared by 2, QV by 2, yes, Q squared by 2C. Such expressions we have given even for the case. And similar expression even we have given in the case of the springs also. Spring, elastic energy, the strain energy also we, it will be of the same method there also. Remember, all this energy we talked in the capacitor was in the form of electric field. Potential energy stored in the form of electric field, whereas in the inductor, all this energy will be stored in the form of magnetic field. Capacitor, energy storage in the form of electric field. Inductor, energy stores in the form of magnetic field. And therefore, one more expression also I would like to remind you. Remember this, you can easily do, of course, uh, the definition of D only. Now I am taking energy by volume which we call energy density small u is equal to b squared by 2 mu naught energy density. If b is the magnetic induction mu naught then u is equal to this is also an important definition. This is also similar to what you remember. This is what is you have taken epsilon naught this is also uh, epsilon naught e squared by 2. It was in the case of energy density for a capacitor. This is for inductor. Right. So these expressions, examples, very, very, very simple. So you have to remember this expression, the work energy inductor. And again, that Li is equal to 5 will give you one or two more expressions. Now, in the concept of uh, mutual induction, we have the case where EMF is induced in a coil due to another current carrying coil in its neighborhood. In the case of self-induction, EMF was induced in a coil due to the coil itself that was the current carried by the coil getting changed. So when EMF is induced in a coil due to another current carrying coil in its neighborhood, that phenomenon is what is called as mutual induction. So in mutual induction, we use two coils. The coil which induces, we call it as primary coil. The coil in which EMF is induced is called secondary coil. And for the mutual induction to be so effective, it is always uh, we represent or we show the secondary coil placed well inside the primary coil so that all the flux due to the primary will have a link with the secondary and hence we have a maximum effect of uh, this induction. And now here you see, same parameters as we have used or the same lines as we did in the case of uh, self-induction. The only difference is that here whenever we are using the flux or the currents or the number of turns, we always refer to whether it is of the primary or that of secondary. That is the only difference. Now you see, the flux link with the secondary is proportional to current carried by the primary. That is the difference. And therefore, immediately what does get? Ms phi s is equal to m times ip. This is what is m, the coefficient of mutual induction. When it comes the dimensions, when it comes the units, same as that of self induction, self inductance, that is L, same unit of Weber per ampere, or else uh, joule per ampere square, volt second per ampere, whatever expression we have given, the same is also for m. And again, that Faraday's second law, E is equal to d phi by dt, of course, that negative sign, E is equal to d phi by dt. Now, E, the EMF induced in secondary, therefore, it is E, yes, is equal to this M constant outside the operation, and this is what is rate of change of current in the primary. A big formula, you can find good number of examples even in the previous years, one, two, three, four terms are there. This is how we look at any expression. What is LHS, what is RHS and when we read, we read the data, whether it is uh, one unknown or two unknowns, how to substitute. This is a general procedure, right? 
So E s equal to minus n times d i by d t. This d i is the change in the current in an interval of d t. That is what we have told. So this mutual reduction once again an expression for capital M. We have only given expressions for L. Same way with a very very small difference and that is why it may be a confusion for student also. Remember the subscript. Uh, the subscripts that we have taken as yes for secondary, p for primary in the case of mutual, whereas in the case of self induction, we have never given the expressions of secondary or primary. So, this will avoid the confusion, I suppose. If now you see the case of a mutual induction in the case of two circular parts, primary coil and inside a place a secondary coil, here I have taken as or yes for secondary, p, p for primary. Now, for this case, earlier. Self induction for circular coil, we remember that expression n square term was there, right? Here, instead of n square, what we will find is np times n is number of terms in the primary and number of terms in secondary. There it was only capital R, the radius of the coil. Now here it is Rs square, radius of the secondary square by 2 times Rp is the change that you got. Earlier it was the case of pi mu naught n square r by 2. This n square term now here n p n s r s square term and here it was r by 2 because here what we did again r by r is only one that will be remaining dimensionally right. So that is what is a small change. Now similarly for uh, a square loops self induction sorry mutual induction capital L I have taken for uh, the length of the primary and the small l as the side of uh, the secondary, then here also the same expression 2 root 2 was there, mu naught was there, there it was n square is n p times n s. Earlier it was only capital L, now here it is L that is secondary. This small l for secondary L square by pi into L, L for primary. So in the numerator term you have secondary and in the denominator term you have primary. Here also the same you can find, right? Here also the same you can find. Whereas in the case of a solenoid coil inside a coil, solenoid coil M, we can write it as mu naught. Again, it was there mu naught if it is filled with any other material to increase the M value. Mu naught, mu naught is also possible, optional. N S, number of terms in secondary, number of terms in primary. There it was N square. It is again N square, but N S times N P. Denominator term, same as you can see, this is primary length of the primary coil times area of the secondary coil. So this is what is the expression for capital M. Here again, what are the different parameters on which M depends and M does not depend can be a topic. Now this mutual reduction finds a very, very, very big application in the form of transformer. Transformer which is used to, which is used to acquire desired AC voltages. Supposing from High AC voltages, we are getting low AC voltages or low AC voltages converted into high AC voltages. Such device, what is called as transformer. Transformer works on the principle of mutual induction. This transformer topic, uh, of course, a simple concept. We will discuss in the next topic of alternating current. One or two expressions and examples also we will do in our next topic. So, this is what is the uh, point that we have to remember. Complete electromagnetic induction, we can divide it into four titles. Number one, the magnetic flux and Faraday's loss expressions, and then the concept of self induction, the concept of mutual induction. Now, it's been a bit uh, lengthy video, therefore, I'm stopping. The last but not least, the fourth uh, title or fourth heading in this topic would be motional EMF and along with uh, LC oscillations. So these are the major readings and the other two major readings uh, we will do it tomorrow along with few examples. Have a very very great day.